Well, I'm joined in the studio by the Conservative MP, Laura Trott. Uh, very good to see you today. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Um, sh shall we start, I suppose, with, with what people... I was probably hoping to come more to the end of our interview with, talking a little bit about Liz Truss and, and the economic in impact of what she's saying. How do you reflect on the fact that she's spe speaking today and the kind of things she's going to say about Rishi Sunak and the fact that he spent far too much money in her mind? Well, I think Liz Truss has admitted herself that mistakes were made last year. And I think what is really important is that the Prime Minister was very clear, you know, in the Conservative leadership contest last year, that obviously we must do supply-side reform, it's really important, but, you know, above all, we must be focused on fiscal stability. And that's what he has done since he's been in power. He has restored fiscal stability to this country. He's focused on bringing inflation round, down, growing the economy and cutting the debt. Liz Truss says she would have saved £35 billion if she'd been... Prime Minister, do you think that those sums add up? Uh, no, I don't. OK, that's a pretty straightforward <laughs> answer. The Lib Dems have said it's a bit like an arsonist giving a talk about fire safety. I think, as I said, she admitted mistakes are made. I think it's important that we focus on what we're doing at the moment, though. And that is making sure that monetary and fiscal policy work together. So we're making sure that the government is doing all it can to bring inflation down to support the Bank of England. And that is starting to work. You know, it's still too high at the moment, but it is really coming down. That's really important because that is the biggest pressure facing every family in the United Kingdom at the moment. And bringing inflation down is the best tax, tax cut that we can give any family. The other thing that this government's also doing, though, of course, is going through with her resignation honours list. Uh, there's a number of people on there. Labour are calling for Rishi Sunak to block this because they say someone who's been in the job for such a short length of time shouldn't be allowed to have an honours list. What, what do you think? Uh, that's not a matter for me. That's a matter for kind of the House of Lords and the processes that mm. go through with that. But you must think, I mean, you're speaking here on behalf of the government. I mean, d does the honours system need revamping? There was, of course, enormous concern about Boris Johnson's massive list that he put in after he left Prime Minister. Just, does this government accept that maybe now is the time to relook at this system? Uh, that's not what I'm focused on as Pensions Minister at the moment. What I'm focused on at the moment is ensuring that people have a decent retirement income, you know, some changes that we're talking about today, which is trying to boost people's private pensions. Uh, that's what I think uh, I should be kind of talking about today, and that's absolutely what I'm focused on. And, and we will come to pensions, but it just, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, as you, as you campaign at the next election, when you're on the doorstep talking to people, it's something that that people are concerned about and people will be asking you, you know, why are you allowing these prime ministers who messed up the country to then award their friends? Look, I get that people have concerns about it, but I would definitely argue that the overwhelming concern of people at the moment is about cost of living, it is about inflation, and that is the primary focus of this government. You are announcing uh, today um, about pensions. I mean, of course, Liz Truss's actions led to fears for the bond markets, which has affected many people's pensions. You're talking about a private member's bill on auto-enrolment, which is expected to clear its final hurdle in the House of Lords. Why is this bill important? So when people talk about pensions, quite often they talk about the state pension, but actually people's private pensions are incredibly important. And we brought something in in 2012 called automatic enrolment, which means that when you work, automatically a bit of your money goes towards your pension and crucially a bit of your employer's money goes towards your pension as well. The changes we're bringing forward, which is something that have been called for for a long period of time uh, and have been backed by a private member's bill by Jonathan Gullis and Baroness Rob or uh, Raz Altman, mean that there'll be more money going into your pension from you, but also from your employer. It means you're paying into your pension from the first pound that you earn and that you'll start paying earlier from when you're around 18. But there'll be people who are on the lowest levels of earning um, who you want to auto-enrol, uh, who may not be able to afford the cut to their pay packet if they do this. They can't afford to live now on what they've got. So what we've seen at the moment is that actually very low rates of people uh, withdrawing from automatic enrolment. And, you know, we've obviously put a lot of support in place for people at the moment, the cost of living support, the cost of living um, payments for the lowest paid. Um, but also we're going to phase this in over time. We know it's really important it's done gradually uh, and that the effect on people's income is very small and over a long period. So we've absolutely taken that into account. But aren't you sending a message to people that they can't rely on the state pension? Is that what you're hoping to do? No, not at all. The state pension is always going to be the bedrock of people's support in retirement. But we know to get the retirement that people want, people will want their own private pensions as well. And we're making sure that they've got that in place and also that every single penny that they put into their pension is working really, really hard for them. Um, we're expecting an announcement this week on, on HS2. Can you tell us, is it going to end at Euston or at Old Oak Common? 
Well, look, as you would expect, the government looks at every single penny that it's spending to making sure that we're getting value for money. Uh, I, I don't want to preempt any of that, but it's obviously clear that there are spades in the ground on HS2 at the moment, uh, and, that is, and that is delivering and work is underway. But I mean, in terms of it being a waste of money, it's been a colossal waste of money, isn't it? If it's been, if we spent 100 billion pounds, and it's is actually a railway that doesn't bring people into the heart of London. Well, look, there are clear benefits to the project. It's been a long-term project, but as I said, this is something which uh, you know the government constantly keeps everything it spends under review. But the whole point of it was to level up the north and to do a fast connection between London and the north. We know that it's not going to be going as far into the north as we expected, and it now looks like potentially it may not be even coming into London either. I mean, I think the government's done a huge amount on le levelling up over the course of this parliament. You know, you put millions and millions of pounds into regeneration projects. That's been incredibly important. You know, we've had things like restoring your railways, bringing railway lines back in uh, to use for the first time. So there is a huge amount going on. This but is this part this is, policy, of policy, and it's part and of that. And it costs the most. And it is delivering, right? You know, we are talking about it going to uh, Birmingham, but. As I said, I, I, I'm not the transport minister. I can't preempt what is is going to um, happen. But it's right that the government looks at every single penny that's being spent.